Thanks for coming over to the Sunset Room for what's going to be a lively discussion about something that's really important to the community of Los Angeles, and that is, while LA is famous for entertainment, it also is one of the biggest um, one of the biggest drivers here is the port and all that's all that's involved with it. Um, and we're focused here on job creation. One of the consistent takeaways we've gotten from traveling doing these conferences around the country is that upskilling and training today's workforce is essential for tomorrow. But that raises some questions about how newcomers will find ways to enter the, this workforce of tomorrow, particularly today's youth from underserved communities. We were excited to find a case study right here in LA where schools, nonprofits, and major employers in the Port of Los Angeles business community have partnered to create opportunity for those very communities. Let me introduce the next panel, Growing Tomorrow's Workforce in the Community, moderated by journalist Rachel Oranga, who is at my right. So thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks, I'm really excited here um, to talk about a topic that I've covered for a long time and something very interesting. And so my name's Rachel Oranga, I'm a business reporter. I've been in the LA area for almost two decades reporting. And I'm gonna let each of the panelists introduce themselves and tell them a little bit about what they do in their organization. So I'll just start from my right, Amy. Absolutely, my name is Amy Gratt. I'm CEO of EXP, the Opportunity Engine. And for the last 20 years, we've connected high school students to amazing careers right in their backyard. And we were founded in the port of Los Angeles uh, as an impulsive industry. Uh, an industry that was growing and a community that was in need of opportunities. And today we work with hi uh, high school students across three school districts, over 6,400 students, and engage over 400 industry partners in connecting the dots between curriculum and career. Hi everyone, my name's Arlie Baker and I'm uh, head of communications for the Port of LA. Uh, just a little background about the port. The port is a city agency. Uh, it's a proprietary uh, uh, agency of the city of Los Angeles uh, run by the mayor under the mayor's uh, control. And um, so we have a little bit of a different mission. Our, our job is uh, we're a landlord port. We don't actually um, move the cargo ourselves. We have about 200, about 200 customers, 200 tenants at the port, and uh, in my group, uh, I oversee uh, communication, special events, but we also have a big community relations uh, component as well. And I came to the port in 2004, so I had the pleasure of, of knowing and working with Carol Rowan. She was a harbor commissioner. Harbor commissioners are citizen, uh, they're citizen appointed, uh, uh, it's the, it's the body of the port. They make the decisions and they're appointed by the mayor. So uh, when you're a harbor commissioner, you have a lot of power. And uh, if, if you uh, wield that power right in the right way, you can create something like what's been created with EXP. But there are a lot of hurdles along the way. And uh, there's been a lot of, a number of hurdles that um, EXP and its, its, in its former name, uh, International Trade Education Program, there were a number of hurdles that, that they had to uh, overcome to get to where they are. And so I'll be glad to talk about some of those things uh, in our discussion. Thank you. Thanks for being here. I'm Bob Devine. I work for Marathon Petroleum. I'm a mechanical engineer by training and uh, have moved into management. I, uh, I build things uh, for a living. And one of the favorite things I build are people. And I've had the privilege to serve on the EXP board for six years. And for a couple of those years, I have also served as an advisory chairman to one of the local high schools and one of the academies that uh, is actually the boots on the ground for EXP and in influencing the, the high school students. Uh, I grew up in rural Wisconsin is where I'm from, and uh, early on in my life decided I was good at taking things apart and not putting them back together. So I decided to become an engineer. And uh, one of the things I really enjoy doing with the students is helping them imagine the possibilities, because all they see are the challenges of how hard math is or how hard chemistry might be. But uh, one of the things I try to do is to get our employees engaged with the students to help them identify what their possibilities are. So we'll talk some more about that as we go along. 
but it's my privilege to be here. Thank you. Hi, my name is Rob. Trobius. I'm with Prologis. Uh, for those who don't know, Prologis is a publicly traded real estate investment trust. We're basically the world's largest owner of industrial buildings all over the globe in 19 countries. Uh, here in Los Angeles, where I'm the market officer overseeing our portfolio, which most of our customers are directly related to port operations, import, export. So think Amazon, UPS, FedEx. Those are some of our largest customers across the world. We own the warehouses that they operate in. One of the uh, loudest things we heard from our customers across the country was basically a labor shortage uh, for skilled labor and different types of labor within those warehouses and operations that they have. And we formed what we, what we call the Community Workforce Initiative. We went into cities like uh, Orlando, Oakland, San Francisco, and here in Los Angeles, we really a mandate to partner up with organizations like EXP, which can not only help the community, but also help our customers by connecting the dots with them and getting internships set up. And finally, doing something good for the community and it could also help our bottom line as a company. So it really all comes together quite nicely and I'm very happy to be here uh, to support the panel. Amy, why don't you tell us a little bit about how ESP got started, what the need was for it, why it got started. Absolutely. Um, as Arlie mentioned, uh, we were founded by a former Harbor Commissioner who after eight years of sitting on the Harbor Commission, and really getting to understand the needs of the Port of Los Angeles ecosystem, recognize that the high school students in the communities that are right there in the shadow of the ports really were not benefiting from the economic engine that was delivering one in nine jobs throughout the greater region. Banning High School, Phineas Banning High School in Wilmington, it's a community in the harbor, uh, was graduating at about 40% um, after four years, in 1999 when we started. Today, Banning High School has an 85% graduation rate. What was the connection? It was creating the connections. Um, we brought in uh, a, a group of dedicated industry volunteers, actually the goods movement industry, the petroleum industry, and the city of Los Angeles all were very interested in making an impact directly on the communities that they served. At the same time, LAUSD was struggling to graduate their students college and career ready, and the principal of Banning High School at that time said, what can we do to make a difference? How can we connect the dots for these kids? The answer was to create a small learning community called the International Trade Academy. We let the teachers and the school do what they do best, teach, create an amazing curriculum. But we brought in industry to inform that curriculum. But most importantly, we brought in people, mentors, role models, volunteers to come into the classroom and to help those students see what was right beyond their their classroom, their three block radius that they had limit, been limited to. We had students who lived less than a mile away from the port who had never been to the water. Our goal then and our goal today continues to get those students out of the classroom and into the communities, into the oftentimes really welcoming and excited arms of industry. Because as you've heard uh, earlier on today with some of the panels, these industries are getting older. I mean, we all want to retire sometime soon. And we need that next generation to come up. And we need that generation to be diverse and to be representative. And the students that are in that classroom today are going to be in those boardrooms tomorrow. Well, what kind of applications have you, you, are you showing these students to sell? So people get a sense of that. How that is. So our model is to be an embedded partner in a high school. We work with 10 different high schools across greater Southern California. We are a day in, day out partner serving a high school, primarily serving the high school principals, administrators, and those teachers that are trying to motivate the students. We have year round programming that we do in collaboration with the industry partners. 
Um, and the industry partners will come in not only as volunteers and as practitioners to showcase the technical needs of, of an industry, but oftentimes they also sponsor to create the, 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 um, the resources to make it happen. Women in STEM, it is our hottest, fastest growing program. Our young ladies are excited about math and science and technology, but they want to see role models that look like them. Our Women in STEM program brings over 250 students together to, with, with industry practitioners, women engineers, women architects, women material scientists, women marine biologists, and they get a chance to sit down and, and talk with them about their careers. Not only uh, is that uh, supported, in this case, by Marathon, thank you very much, but it's also staffed by Marathon, Marathon female engineers, and that makes a huge difference. Arlie, before we get into sort of the individual companies and how they're participating, if you can give, oftentimes people don't understand the complexity of the port and the kind of economic engine that it is in Los Angeles. Can you kind of give us a, a sense of how, how many jobs are created out there, what kind of economic engine it is, and a little bit about the complexity of the types of jobs and the types of industries that are involved. Sure. Um, we are the, we're the largest gateway uh, of trade in, in the Western Hemisphere. So close to 40% of the goods imported into North America come through the San Pedro Bay ports. Uh, but when you're when you're looking at when you're when when the port's in your front yard and you're you know 13 years old, you're looking at this giant amorphous industrial complex, and uh, it's very hard to uh, imagine what goes on there. And and a lot of um, what people know, what young people know, is that you know the ships come in. There's there's a, a longshore labor that is moving the ships off the dock. The ships move out um, by truck or rail, and they see that some semblance of, of what's, what's a larger global supply chain. Um, but for every, for every job that is, is at the port physically, there are, uh, there's a magnitude of two or three jobs down line, whether it's at a refinery or a, a warehouse distribution center, we have the largest uh, warehouse and distribution portfolio here in Southern California. So there are a lot of jobs uh, between the docks and, and, uh, and the San Bernardino Mountains, uh, close to a million jobs just right here in, in the five county region. Uh, over a million jobs uh, statewide in California. Our cargo touches every congressional district in the country, 435 congressional districts. And uh, the goods that move through the port uh, facilitate more than three million jobs across the country. So it's a very vast um, uh, job uh, ecosystem when you just look at the supply chain, the, the global trade that comes through uh, the port complex, which is what most people look at. But the beauty of, of uh, a program like EXP is is that it can take students into this world and they quickly realize that it's not just the, the supply chain, it's, um, it's engineers, right. it's marine biologists, um, it's uh, chefs on these beautiful cruise ships, it's uh, hospitality. We have a lot of people moving through the port, so we have uh, a number of hotels uh, it's all those things, and when you're in ninth grade, you know, the key to, you know, we, we've, we've all thought about it and talked about it in the past that, you know, the, that spark that young people need to get. And uh, these days, the earlier they get that spark, the earlier we open up this world to them, uh, the more prepared they're going to be. And, and I think that's, that's really how... Um, the port as this giant industrial complex can um, connect with our community, our underserved community, through programs like EXP. Right, and, and, and I think we talked earlier that there's a really high poverty rate in some of these communities yes. that are adjacent to the port, um, and they do live in the backyard of do. industry. 
And so, Bob and Rob, you guys can both talk about sort of these technical jobs and some of the high-skilled jobs and other um, opportunities and ways you've engaged in this. I don't know, Bob, you want to start? Yeah. So, so I'd, I'd like to talk about it in the context of uh, shared value. So our corporation uh, is a public corporation. We have stockholders. Stockholders have an interest in financial returns. We also have business partners who have, whether they're a supplier or a customer, they have objectives, they have expectations. Uh, we have our employees. They, they want fulfilling careers and, and uh, security of employment. Those are all stock or shareholders in our corporation. And so when we think about sharing value with them, it's pretty clear. Our communities are also part of the uh, stakeholders in our, in our business. And so one of my objectives and our corporate objectives are to align our business objectives proactively with our community objectives. We need good employees. We need well-educated employees. We need employees who can think for themselves. Our community needs development opportunities. Our students in those high schools need to see those opportunities. So we very easily take that corporate initiative called shared value and turn it into what I would call engagement opportunities for our employees to be industry coaches, to go into the classroom and say, okay, here's your project you're working on, which your instructor has sanctioned that fits the curriculum. Here's how you could apply some business principles, some maybe some technical attributes of physics or, or chemistry or um, other, other aspects of electrical engineering or chemical engineering to your project and help them see the application in, in, in their world. And they're meeting real people. And meeting real people is putting a, a face to the corporation. So again, they see the refinery, they see the, uh, the fuel that gets put into their, their cars and their trucks, but they now can identify it with people. They can say Bob or Sue or whomever they're working with are real people. And that's about building those relationships with our community. EXP provides the, the platform to do that really easily with a lot of infrastructure. There's a small team that works with Amy that builds that relationship with the school, with the teacher, that makes it so easy for a volunteer to go and spend a couple hours a month to, to interface with those students. And it's that infrastructure that, for me, is very valuable from the EXP organization that we, we've been taking for granted. We're in place now 20 years, and they've built a really good machine to help us fit into that, uh, into that need and share that value that I talked about. Rob, you want to talk a little bit about your experience with them as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and where we sort of picked the ball up from the port uh, is our warehouses, which where those containers and all the product is going to. So who out here has ordered something online in the last you know, Black Friday or whatever? <laughs> right? Right? I guess first and foremost, thank you, because that product came from the port, probably through one of our warehouses, most likely, into your front doorstep. Um, and so again, e-commerce is here to stay, but it's also creating more skilled job necessity at those warehouses. Um, I was just this morning at, at the Nike and Puma warehouses in Torrance, California here. And again, the jobs are, are evolving. They're not just the you know, old dock worker job, job that you might be thinking of just sitting there, you know, well, I was going to say smoking a cigarette, waiting for the truck to show up. Um, you know, the, the logistics industry is uh, really evolved, and again, mainly because of e-commerce. So it's here to stay. And so again, we pick it up from the port. And as I mentioned at the outset of this, uh, our customers, the loudest thing they mentioned was lack of, of, of labor. And so I would actually recommend uh, everyone in this room, your companies, to find something. It might not be EXP for your industry, but it'd be something similar because our company is is uh, going full steam ahead with EXP here in Los Angeles. The reason is is the community, we operate in many communities, the, the uh, same communities that EXP serves. So we're doing our part for the community that we do business in. The customer, you're listening to the customer who needs the labor, needs the skilled labor. So we're solving that. And then frankly, it just kind of feels good. You know, uh, we all do charitable work, I'm sure, you know, for different things. But at the same time, you're doing something that actually you can see it come back and help your customers. It just, it's the perfect recipe. So that's why we're so involved with this because of the fact that it's really everyone wins and let's be real as a company if it can also benefit us a little bit which we do believe it does with our customers uh, my my experience now with some of these customers that are involved with the xp that 
level of customer relationship has really heightened because we have something in common. We've seen at the EXP events, uh, we feel great about what we're doing, but we're also helping each other's company. So you put it all together, I'm probably sounding like a little bit of a commercial now too, um, but it, it's great. And so I'm sure there's uh, different types of EXP programs out there for different industries. I highly recommend finding them and getting involved. All right, I, I'm curious about your success rates or how do you measure success? What does success look like? for this program and maybe even for, for you in your involvement? What does that look like? Well, a as a high school-based program, um, the first success rate is often looked at as graduation rates. And right. I mentioned that the schools that we've been supporting have steadily risen in their graduation rates. We're, we believe that we're part of that solution. The internship program, which we run every summer, which all of these folks are, are very much involved in, that's the needle mover. If Banning High School has an 85% graduation rate, the interns graduate at 97%. It, it, it solidifies the, the work that they're doing in the classroom, and it motivates them in their senior year. So moving the needle on graduation rates. It's not necessarily uh, being put upon us to have these results, but we just recently had a very tangible result. An intern worked at one of our customers' warehouses and was hired on full time. And so we've only been involved with a couple of years, but we plan we we know we're going to see more and more of that. So again, very tangible wins uh, by participating. And so happy customer, community is happy because they saw one of their own get a full time job at a great company and we've done our part, so it's real. So, so I think another measure is how many of these students come to these internship interviews very well prepared. So the, the Marathon uh, Los Angeles Refinery has had a summer youth program for 27 years, and we take somewhere between 25 and 50 students every year, and we uh, provide them with an employment opportunity, and our employees step forward and volunteer. Over the last couple of years, we've partnered more closely with EXP. So, I don't know, 25%, 20% of those students would come through the EXP funnel. Their level of preparation, having gone through that industry coaching opportunity in the school or the mock interview process where some of our employees have helped with that, these kids just stand right out. And part of our, our, uh, our mantra here is we're, we're wanting to employ underprivileged uh, youth to show them opportunities. So we can't take all these privileged DXP kids because they're interviewing so well. <laughs> that's, that's actually one of the challenges. So. I, I wanna, we have a few minutes. I think, did you wanna? Um, when we talked to, about, um, when we talk about success, I, it's, there was an inflection point uh, in the mid uh, 2000s when the administration changed. So we have a new mayor, we have a new board of harbor commissioners. The first thing that they're interested in is, you know, what's this program? Uh, we're uh, contributing quite a bit of money. At the time, we were a foundational um, uh, sponsor of, of, um, of EXP, so we were the largest contributor to the program. So immediately, uh, there, was, there was the need to, um, to evaluate what, what the value was for, um, for con continuing to fund the program. And I, I think, uh, I agree that the internships are, are key. If you're, you know, if you're at ninth or 10th grade and you have an internship already, I didn't have internships until I was in college. Uh, so I think that that's big. But there are other mm -hmm. like amazing stories. You, there's, there's stories about um, uh, young people who, who moved into the Wilmington community and didn't speak English. And at the end of their high school, when they graduated, they went to Cal Maritime Academy, which is where you go to learn to uh, be a mariner, to, to sail on the high seas. And so it's those types of stories that are really outliers, or you are going into a downtown um, Los Angeles law firm. Uh, so uh, there's, a, there's a mix that, that is uh, certainly measurable 
uh, on a number of levels. And I think I, I think you were saying that marathon these um, programs have some of these success stories, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, we do have like just a few minutes, so I wanted to give a chance for the audience. If there's anybody who had any questions. I moved here to LA recently, and a lot of my background has focused in community programs and workforce development. Um, I work for Disney now, and this is one of the things that's top of mind for me is how we engage with the communities in which we work and pull our consumers. How has the response been from people managers, especially executive level people managers, about absorbing these youths into the workforce and creating pathways for promotion and development. So meaning when they come and they start obviously as entry level, but what is the growth process? Are they targeted for growth opportunities or coaching? What does that look like? So I can speak to that. Um, I, the, as I said, 27 years of a summer youth program at the Los Angeles Refinery, the Marathon Los Angeles Refinery. Now, we've gone through several leadership changes and uh, several ownership changes during that time frame. And with every one of those changes, the impact that they see of these programs on the employees, I'll go back to that shared value concept. So we have employees who have passion about this. They come from those high schools, they come from those neighborhoods, and they want to give back. So the employees are stepping forward into that space. They're feeling good about that. The community, as a, as a um, uh, seeing that outreach to them, that we get positive feedback from that. So our executives embrace this program and uh, continue to, to fund it, not only from a financial perspective, but from giving people the space to do that. I, and I, I think to your question, is, is beyond the program, is there further growth opportunities? Like, are these people carried through or, you know, helped, are they mentored along the way, given so, that, you know, they came in through? So I would say there's nothing special done after the yeah. internship. However, we have a number of very successful employees who have started out that way. HR professional, accounting professional, engineering professionals. I have examples of all those folks who through their developmental opportunities, whether it's been through the EXP program or other programs, have been able to compete really, really well in, in our corporation. Yeah, well, we're in it for two years, so our first hires have just happened. Um, but let's talk in two years, and I'll tell you what happened, so. I'll say that as a city agency, um, we, we have a great student worker. We've, we've had one for decades, in fact, uh, our last two, two out of three uh, top engineering folks started at the port as student workers. So there's definitely uh, opportunities. Once uh, these uh, AXP uh, students graduate from high school and they go on to uh, a college, they have an opportunity to be a student worker uh, at the port, so they they can continue with the experience that they they had. Um, uh, through EXP, and you know, it's very common uh, for us to hire student workers to, to grow our workforce from the bottom. We're a civil service agency, so we don't have a lot of people who come in at mid-management level, uh, but if you, if you come in uh, from, from the ground floor, so to speak, uh, the opportunity is limitless. I'd like to go back and uh, add one more point to my answer. The employees who volunteer, they actually expand their careers. So I'll, I'll use myself personally. So I have benefited from a better awareness of the challenges in the school system. I have benefited from a lesson that we've all learned about how not to tell a book by its cover. So a young man who uh, chooses to dress, dress as a goth, um, gothic I guess it's called, um, and I, frankly would diminish his input until he started talking in, the, in these one-on-one -on -one conversations or small group conversations. Uh, so I've also seen my employees in those environments really demonstrate skills that I've not seen them demonstrate in the corporate environment. And, and that has helped me then understand their value to our company even more so. Thank you all very much. That's
very inspiring and it's real and you're having an impact and that's uh, terrific for the community. Um, before we break for the next uh, coffee break, and uh, let me just tell you about the three other breakouts that will be next. In the Wilshire Room, Seekout is hosting a session called Creating a Data-Driven DNI Strategy. In Melrose, Ultimate Software is uh, hosting a session entitled Understanding Your Emotional Intelligence, The Art and Science of Human Performance. And here in Sunset, M-Train will be hosting a workshop entitled Decoding and Curing Tricky Cultural Issues. Uh, so enjoy your break, but let's thanks. thank our panel very much. Thank you.